Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be going over antihypertensive meds. This is another Kahoot. I have my students on live on uh, TikTok. So hello, thank you guys for joining. If you haven't done so already, please do not forget, like this video, press that red notification button so you'll be notified every time a new video is released. Subscribe to my channel, and don't forget, I'm now providing NCLEX, NGN, tutorials, reviews on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Also, you can get audio lessons on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And we're going to get started shortly. Okay, guys, it's 5.35 p.m. I'm about to start. Hurry up and squeeze in. Okay. Blood pressure. We're going to be going over blood pressure. During blank, the cardiac muscles relax and blood returns to the heart from the systemic and pulmonary veins. Is it during systole, during diastole, during arrhythmia, or during dysrhythmia? What do you guys say? Very good, guys. So it's during diastole. When those cardiac muscles are relaxed and those ventricles are filling, this is, happens during diastole. True or false? Sinus bradycardia is often seen as in athletes. Is this true or is this false? And guys, it's true. This is true. So sinus normal, oh. sinus normal, and then you have bradycardia, which is slow heart rate. Give me one second, guys. Sinus, which means, you know, basically normal, and then bradycardia, you have a slow heart rate. Now, we often see this in athletes, and I want you to think about it. What's happening when the patient's um, heart rate is increasing? That heart is trying to push out more oxygenated blood to the tissues. But that person who's already an athlete, they're already used to that heart rate being increased, that perfusion happening, they don't need as much oxygen to the tissues as your normal person. So we will normally see in, well, not normally, but it's, it's not abnormal to see sinus bradycardia in an athlete. So yes, the heart rate has slowed. It's lower than 60. Remember 60 to 100, that's what's normal. It's slower than 60. However, it's still normal. We're not seeing any dysrhythmia in that heart rate. So that is very true. What is the pacemaker of the heart? Is it the SA node? Is it the AV node? Is it the left ventricle? Or is it the right ventricle? The pacemaker of the heart. Very good. It's the SA node. It's the SA node that actually starts that rhythm. It starts that impulse. The heart needs a constant supply of blood, which is furnished by the arteries, the veins, the coronary arteries, or the coronary veins. What do you guys say? And it's the coronary arteries. I'm so happy most of you guys chose that correct answer. So just like all of the tissues and organs in your body needs to be perfused, right? So does your heart. Your heart itself is a muscle that needs its own uh, blood supply to carry that oxygen, vitamin, nutrients, all of those minerals. And what is it that carries, um, allows the blood to come to the heart is the coronary arteries.
Which antihypertensive drug ends in pril? Are they ACE inhibitors? Are they ARBs? Those are your angiotensin receptor blockers. Are they calcium channel blockers or are, are they vasodilators? Which meds end in pril? Very good ACE inhibitors. Remember the story of my arch nemesis. You know, she always aced her exams, a pro. So you remember those meds that end in pro are those ACE inhibitors. We really weren't arch nemesis. We we're great friends. True or false? ACE inhibitors are the drug of choice for Black patients with hypertension. Is that true or is that false? Very good. That is absolutely false. When it comes to the ACE inhibitors, when it comes to the ARBs, those are the last choices for Black people. Why? Because those meds are not as effective and they can cause, you know, an unrelenting cough. That means no matter what medication you give that patient, that cough does not go away. So no, um, that is not the medication um, for, for Blacks. There are much better medications on the market. True or false? ARBs are the drug of choice for Black patients with hypertension. Is that true or is that false? Okay, so let's talk about it. And it's false. Guys, I didn't even realize this was a slide. And I gave you the answer when we were talking about the ACE inhibitors. I told you that we are not going to give ACE inhibitors or ARBs, the angiotensin receptor blockers. We're not giving them to Black people. You know, we have uh, hydrochloric thiazide diuretics. There are much better drugs on the market to give to Black folks. We are not going to give them an ACE inhibitor or an angiotensin receptor blocker, which is an ARB. So the correct answer is false. I just gave you guys the answer. I don't understand how 28 of you still chose true. true. No ARBs, no in ACE inhibitors for Black folks. Y'all trying to kill me? Select all that applies. Untreated hypertension places a patient at risk for what? coronary artery disease, cardiac death, stroke, renal failure, loss of vision, hypotension. Select all that applies. What do you think that um, untreated hypertension can result in or place a patient at risk for? Okay, most of you guys did good. Let's talk about this. Someone having hypertension and it not being treated. Yes, it can cause coronary artery disease. Remember, those coronary arteries, those are the vessels that's actually feeding the heart muscle. So day in and day out, those uh, vessels have to be um, subjected to all that high pressure. They are not going to respond to the pressure changes as they should, right? Those vessels can get weak, absolutely. And guess what that can cause? Cardiac death if those um, heart cells are not being perfused. Absolutely, patient can have a stroke. One of those, remember how I told you the vessel can become weak? Well, guess what? It can become so weak that it actually ruptures as patient has a stroke. Renal failure, this absolutely can throw the patient into kidney failure. Loss of vision, think about those tiny, 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 tiny little vessels in your eyeballs. Absolutely could cause um, loss of vision, but not hypotension. Hypotension is the opposite of hypertension. Hypotension is your blood pressure being too low. So how untreated hypertension is gonna cause hypotension? That makes absolutely no sense. Whoever guys chose hypotension, I want you to put on your critical thinking hats. That's the opposite, but everything else absolutely uh, untreated hypertension can cause. Select all that applies. What are some factors that can affect the blood pressure? Select all that apply. Psychological stress, high frequency noise, high salt diet, age, lack of rest, 
genetic predisposition, what do you guys think? Select all that apply, factors that can affect the blood pressure. Very good, all of these factors. One, psychological stress. You come home early and find out that your spouse is cheating on you and took all the money at the bank account. Yeah, that can make your blood pressure go up, go high. High frequency noises. That can also, without you even realizing, it can increase your blood pressure. High salt diet. Why? Fluid follows salt. The more fluid you have, the more uh, pressure being exerted against the vessel, your blood pressure is going to increase. Age. Absolutely. The older that you are, the longer you've had the longer time you've had on this earth to eat those foods that are high in cholesterol, that are clogging up your arteries, that are um, causing those arteries to get hard, or the longer you've had to have that hypertension, absolutely. The older that you are, the higher your risk factor for hypertension is. Lack of rest. Well, think about it. If you don't get enough sleep, don't you think that's going to cause you emotional and psychological stress? Yup. And both of those can increase your blood pressure. So it's like a domino effect. Yup. And genetic predisposition. If it's in your genes, it's just, um, uh, uh, I, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but it's, it's, it's in your DNA that, um, uh, every, first degree, second degree relatives have had essential hypertension, you're going to be at risk for hypertension. Studies are still being um, done to find out exactly why, exactly how that happens. We're not sure yet, but we absolutely know that having a genetic predisposition that absolutely does place you at risk for e essential hypertension. True or false? African Americans are more responsive to diuretics and they should be considered the first line treatment with lifestyle changes. True or false? African Americans are more responsive to diuretics and that should be considered as a first line treatment with lifestyle changes. What do you guys think? True. Very good. I just talked to you guys about not giving ACE or ARBs to the Black folks, right? And I told you that the that the diuretics are a better choice for Black people. And to be sp more specific, it's thiazide diuretics. Those are going to be our first line of drugs that we expect to be ordered for a Black patient. Now, Black, white, whatever your race is, always when it comes to hypertension, we're going to teach the patient about lifestyle changes, and you know, exercise and diet and all of that before we move on to the drugs. But whenever we move on to the drugs, it's still going to include the lifestyle changes. We're just adding the drugs to it. This is true. Select all that apply. The first step in care management for the hypertensive patient includes, is it weight reduction, smoking cessation, moderation of alcohol intake, reduction of calcium in diet, reduction of sodium in diet, or increase in physical activity. The first step in care management for hypertension, what's it going to include? What are we going to teach the patient to do or not to do? All right, let's talk about this. And I'm happy most of you guys did not choose the calcium. Let's talk about it. Weight reduction, absolutely. Blood pressure is high. That's one of the first things we're going to tell you to do. Exercise, lose some weight. Stop smoking. Smoking causes vasoconstriction. It's going to make your blood pressure go even higher. Moderation of alcohol intake. We're not going to tell you to completely quit alcohol the way we tell you to completely quit smoking, but we're going to tell you to smoke, slow down with the alcohol to only drink in moderation and not excessively. We're not going to tell you to reduce calcium in diet. That's not necessary. What we are going to tell you to reduce is the sodium in diet, because remember, fluid follows sodium. The more fluid you have in the vessels, the more pressure being exerted against the vessel walls, the higher your blood pressure is going to be. And of course, physical exercise. Let's get you to exercise. Let's get you to lose weight. Let's get you to burn um, those calories and burn that fat, especially that fat that's clogging those arteries and will bring that blood pressure down. True or false? ACE inhibitors should be taken on a full stomach to ensure absorption. 
Is that true or is that false? False. It's false, guys. When it comes to ACE inhibitors, we don't want that the ACE inhibitor having to compete with any receptor sites in the stomach. So um, you're not taking on full stomach. You're taking it on an empty stomach with a full glass of water. Select all that applies. A patient on ACE inhibitors should be monitored closely for excessive sweating, vomiting, diarrhea, dehydration, Hypotensive crisis, or Professor D, I have no clue at this point. Select all that applies. When it comes to ACE inhibitors, what are you going to be watching the patient very closely for? Very good. So let's talk about this guy. The one person chose purple. All right. So when it comes to ACE inhibitors, just think about the job of the ACE inhibitor is to decrease the blood pressure, right? So we're already giving that patient something that's going to decrease their blood pressure. Do we want them in any type of condition that their blood pressure can be even lower and throw them into hypotensive crisis? No. So one of those things we're going to do is avoid dehydration. Guess what? Excessive sweating, that can cause dehydration. Vomiting, that can cause dehydration. Diarrhea, that can cause dehydration. Dehydration, that can cause dehydration. And hypotensive crisis. Hypotensive crisis would be a result of those condition causing the patient to be severely dehydrated. So all of these are situations that we would monitor the patient for. True or false, ACE inhibitors and ARBs should be taken together. Is that true or is that false? ACE inhibitors and angiotensin, re angiotensin receptor blockers, those are ARBs. Should they be taken together, true or false? Very good. False. Never, ever, 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 ever give an ACE and an ARB together. If it's ordered, you're going to hold that medication, call the healthcare provider, because that was a mistake. They are not given together. You're going to mess around and get your patient in the hospital. Cause a hypotensive crisis. Which drug class depresses myocardial contractility, slows cardiac impulses, relaxes and dilates the arteries. Which drug class does this? Is it vasodilators, ACE inhibitors, ARBs, or calcium channel blockers? Calcium channel blockers. And here's your key, guys. The minute you saw Depressing the cardi um, myocardial contractility, you should have known that it was a cardi um, cal calcium channel blockers that we were talking about. But they also do slow the cardiac impulses and it relaxes and dilates the arteries. And that's, that's a, a mechanism of action that causes the blood pressure to be lowered. Select all that applies. There are specific calcium channel blockers that cannot be cut crushed or chewed. What are they? Select all that applies. Atenolol, deltiazam, verapamil, metoprolol, dicardipine, or nifedipine. Select all that applies. Which calcium channel blockers do you think cannot be cut, crushed, or chewed? All right, let's talk about this. So atenolol, that's wrong. What's atenolol? That's a beta blocker. Daltiazam, yes, this is a cal uh, calcium channel blocker and you cannot cut it, you can't crush it, you can't chew it. Verapamil, yes, this is a ch uh, calcium channel blocker that also can't be cut, crushed, or chewed. Metoprolol, what's that? That's a beta blocker. That's not a calcium channel blocker. Nicardipine, yep, that's a calcium channel blocker, can't cut, crush, chew, and nifedipine, also a calcium channel blocker that you cannot cut, crush, or chew. 
Last question. True or false? Calcium channel blockers are indicated for both hypertension and angina. Is that true or is that false? Very good. It's true. Remember with the calcium channel blockers, not only does it slow down the impulse, it would decrease that contractility, right? So um, it's a great medication, not only for heart uh, hypertension, but that chest pain that the patient may experience when the heart muscle itself is not getting enough oxygen. Guys, there is so much about the antihypertensive meds that you need to know. There's definitely going to be a part two, but I'm going to break it up because there's other subjects on my list that I have to cover with you. But everything that I talked about about on this Kahoot, please go back, read your textbook, make sure you know about it because these are the main things you're going to be asked about when you're taking cardiology, when you're covering this information, or if you get to NCLEX and they happen to ask, you know, about those medication, it's going to be the same concepts. Now, let's see how you guys did. Number three, Liv, congratulations, great job. Number two, Rach. Great job. Number one. Bray, what wonderful job. Great job. Fourth place, Kaylin. Fifth place, Jay-Z. Oh, I love that, Jay-Z. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget, on my website, Nexus Nursing Institute, you can now book your NCLEX NGN review, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Thank you for watching, and you guys can catch me on the next video.